The entire basis for all of this is the manifesto from the El Paso shooter. You might say the lie of the week is that the manifesto conclusively connects President Trump to the massacre at the Walmart in El Paso. But when you read the manifesto, and I don't think you have, and I wouldn't expect you to, and I wouldn't ask you to, and and you'd be wasting your time, but if you read the manifesto, Donald Trump is hardly in there. And when he is, it's not what you expect. It's not what you would think based on what you've heard. Byron York wrote a piece about this saying the El Paso shooter manifesto is the basis for the charge that the killings were inspired by President Trump. It's received enormous news coverage, but when you read it, the shooter says he expects to be killed, which he wasn't, and he um, says that he's had the same ideology for several years, let me, read, let me just quote it. My ideology has not changed for several years. My opinions on automation, immigration, and the rest predate Trump and his campaign for president. I am putting this here because some people will blame the president or certain presidential candidates for the attack. This is not the case. I know that the media will probably call me a white supremacist anyway and blame Trump's rhetoric. The media is infamous for fake news. Their reaction to this attack will likely just confirm that. This is the extent to which President Trump is named in the manifesto. In other words, when he is named, he is named as not being the reason for what this man did. But you could be forgiven for thinking based on what you've heard, that the manifesto is some kind of love letter to Donald Trump. And it isn't. And at this point, on Thursday, as we come up on almost a week since the El Paso shooting, you would think that Donald Trump hand-delivered the gun to this guy's house. Now, Let me just give you a couple of other items, and then I'll kind of tie this all together. Uh, There's a woman uh, named Jamie Carter who tweeted about how um, Trump supporters better be careful for when the Democrats win. She goes on to say uh, all these ridiculous things. We're going to turn all the Chick-fil-A's into Planned Parenthoods. There'll be a Planned Parenthood on every corner. And she basically says, uh, you you guys better not lose because if we win, we're going to make your lives hell. Here's another item. There's a story out today about a movie called The Hunt. Now, normally I would never talk about a movie that I haven't seen because you sound ridiculous drawing conclusions about a movie when you haven't seen it and you don't know it. And if I thought this was a movie that I didn't want people to go see or I was against people seeing, it would be stupid for me to talk about it on the radio show. But I'm going to break those rules in this case just to make this point. The, um, <clears throat> the movie is called The Hunt. It's coming out from Universal Pictures. And according to The Hollywood Reporter... It's about people who live in blue states going out to hunt and kill red staters who are pro-life or are deemed racist. And there's some controversy about the movie because not uh, all of the television networks want to accept the ad for the trailer for the movie. I don't know exactly when it's supposed to come out, but apparently the trailer is already being offered to various networks, and there's, there, some of them are balking about running it. Country belongs to us. It's just business. Hunting human beings for sport. They're not human beings. 
Every year, a bunch of elites kidnap normal folk like us. Where'd they get you from? Wyoming. Mississippi. Orlando. <laughs> and hunt us for sport. Okay, so you get the idea. I don't know if it's uh, supposed to be like a satire. Uh, maybe it's some sort of high art that just went over my head. But I was thinking when I heard about this, of do you remember when Bush was president? They made a movie called The Assassination of George W. Bush. And they intercut actual footage of Bush so that in the movie it looked like Bush was getting shot. He was walking along a rope line outside some event, and you see him get shot and fall to the sidewalk. And using real footage and CGI, it's very realistic. And then the movie goes on to talk about how um, after he succumbs to his uh, injuries, Cheney is president and becomes a sort of dictator. So my point is people are fantasizing on the left about what they will do when they have power, about what they could do to you if they had power. Um, there, there seems to be a kind of um, glee at the thought of winning the 2020 election. I don't know what's going to happen in 2020. But I wonder how this is going to affect red state America. I wonder how this is going to affect Trump supporters. Because what's happening now is you're starting to realize this isn't just about Trump. The hatred isn't just for Trump. The lying and, and uh, distorting is not just about Trump. It's about you. He can handle himself. You know, he can serve out his term. He can go to Mar-a-Lago. He can live the privileged life he's always lived. And he has the money to insulate himself and his family. But they hate you. They have designs on you. Joaquin reminded us of that this week, didn't he? 